Hello, I'm Marissa Schaefer. And I'm Jenna Cantor, and welcome to Physiotherapy Performance Perspectives, a physical therapy podcast for performing artists. Today, we'd like to welcome Julie Siegel to PPP. Hi, guys. Julie Siegel is a doctor of physical therapy and a dancer. She earned her degree in dance at Goucher College before moving to NYC to dance professionally. She then stayed in the city and studied to become a physical therapist at NYU. Currently, Julie is the Associate Clinical Director of Neurosport Physical Therapy in New York City, where she specializes in performing arts medicine. She works regularly with dancers and Broadway performers. Julie is here today to discuss the consequences of dancing a show in heels. So let's dive right in. All right. So what shows have you worked with that involved people dancing in heels? Currently, I'm working with Cagney and a Bronx Tale. Something that our company Neurosport does is we provide uh, some injury prevention seminars, risk, risk assessment, uh, rake stage seminars. And I've done those for Elf, The Cherry Orchard, and Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet of 1812. Awesome. Um, Okay, so now we want to kind of dive into the heels portion, right? So we first want to ask you what what effect does wearing heels have on your muscles and joints? So when you're standing in heels, let's start from the floor up. Uh, In your ankles, it's going to put you in a relative position of plantar flexion, which means that the ankle is a little more pointed than not. This makes the ankle a little bit more unstable. So the talus, which is the joint between the two bones on the outside, the tibia and the fibula, end up being farther apart from those two bones. Uh, So there's more instability that ends up occurring there. Uh, The gastroc and soleus, the calf muscles, those end up getting tight in this position. Moving on up, most people, if they're relaxed, they end up having their knees hyperextended because they start to hang out in their joints, which is a lot easier than using your muscles. From there, moving up, Uh, The hips end up being anteriorly rotated, so you have this increased lumbar lordosis in the low back. This ends up making the psoas a little bit tighter and the low back tighter, stretches out the core so it's harder to engage it. After understanding everything that's going on with the muscles and joints, that's great detail that you just gave us, how does wearing heels change the pressure on your foot and why is this important? There was a study I found from 2010 in the International Journal of Experimental and Computational Biomechanics that discusses uh, the difference between dancing barefoot and dancing in heels. They found significant differences in the pressure that ends up occurring in the uh, forefoot or the ball of the foot. They found that there are insignificant differences in the differences in height. So it doesn't really matter how high the heel is. It just matters that you're in a heel and the pressure is forward in the toe. In fact, they found that dancing in a 10 centimeter heel, which is about four inches, ends up uh, resulting in three times the amount of pressure in the forefoot. So what we just talked about where all of these shifts end up occurring, it's because you're placed in this anterior loaded position that ends up affecting the joints from the ground up. Cool. I have two follow-up questions before my next question. So um, just going back to the effects you were talking about on muscles and joints, um, can you explain a little bit more about what uh, a lumbar lordosis looks like? A lumbar lordosis looks like the belly is pulled forward, and this ends up creating an increased arch in the low back. So people who don't necessarily have strong cores and hang out on their ligaments, a lot of times dancers, you'll end up seeing this position. Great. Okay. That answered my question. And then just to make sure I'm hearing you correctly, you say anterior shift. You just mean uh, the weight of your body is pushed forward, right? Correct. Okay, great. All right. So next question then. Um, How does wearing heels then change the way you dance? If you are dancing barefoot, you, your ankle is naturally in uh, plantigrade, which means that it's just sitting in its natural 90 degree position. And you have the best length tension relationship of the muscles to be able to go into either a releve up on your toes or into a plie, bending your knees. All the muscles know how to do that nicely from that position. 
when you're in a heel, you're much closer to that releve. So it's a little bit easier to pop up into your releve. It makes things like uh, doing a turn a lot easier, but it ends up making using your plie a lot harder. So if you need to travel across the floor in large steps or if you need to jump, you don't have that shock absorption that you would use and your, they, your plie would give you. Uh, so your body ends up absorbing the shock differently and uh, it creates asymmetries in the body, which will end up leading to injury. Great. Actually, bouncing off what you just said, would you mind explaining exactly what you mean by a length tension relationship? The muscles in the body are aligned with the joints in a natural position so that when they are in that natural alignment, the muscles work best. If the muscles are shortened, other muscles around it don't know how to work properly. That's great. That actually helps out a lot. Thank you. Um, So after getting a better understanding of how the heels can affect our bodies, do you tend to see certain injuries pop up when dancers begin a show in heels? Absolutely. Starting from the bottom again, you'll end up seeing uh, bunions end up forming. Hallux valgus is what we call that. You'll see calf strains, Achilles tendonitis, FHL tendonitis, which happens a lot in dancers specifically plantar fasciitis, moving up into the knee, uh, something that we call PFPS or patellofemoral pain syndrome, and then low back pain and any number of issues going up the spine. And I'm assuming that's because of all the altered uh, mechanics of your body, right? Absolutely, yes. When you have asymmetries caused by this altered position, you get injury. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we know dancers have to dance in heels if they're in shoes that tell them they have to do so. Um, But (laughs) what can a dancer do to prevent injury if they spend their days dancing in heels? So during the rehearsal process, if they have the option to do so, wearing sneakers can help out. But you need to be careful if you're turning because if the floor is sticky, you don't want to end up torquing your knee. Other things that can be really helpful are doing a good warm-up and a good cool-down. Great. Thank you. Uh, Actually, this is going very smoothly with my next question. (laughs) Are there certain stretches or exercises you'd recommend to counteract the effect of wearing heels during rehearsals and performance? Yes, there are. So because you're in this, what we were talking about, an anterior lordosis, that anterior uh, tilt of the pelvis, you end up having a weaker core and your glutes aren't necessarily working either. So strengthening your core and your glutes together and those things are going to end up working on your posture and your posture is really what you need to prevent this shift in the body working on proper alignment making sure that all your muscles are turned on as opposed to just hanging out on your ligaments and then uh, so these are things you want to do before the show as a part of your warm-up and then after the show that's when you want to stretch your calves both statically and dynamically. So doing a yoga warm-up where you get into a down dog and you're actively stretching your calves, moving through the position, and then doing a regular old calf stretch for 30 seconds three times, that is going to greatly help. Great, thanks. Um, Are there certain heels that are more friendly from a mechanical perspective, and why is that? So a wider toe box is going to provide you with more space if you are a dancer who has bunions or just a wide forefoot. A wider heel will provide you with more stability, a t- uh, stability in the rear foot, whereas a T-strap across the front of the arch is going to give you more stability in the midfoot. But really, it boils down to what kind of foot do you have and what do you need to make the shoe work? So do you need, do you pronate a lot? Does your foot roll in? Do you need to get an insert for your shoe? Um, Do you have any other thing that's going on in your foot that you need to make some sort of alteration for? So this may not necessarily be something you can do on your own. You may want to see a podiatrist who can help you out with this. There are many uh, doctors in the city who work specifically with dancers who can help make these modifications for your shoe. Thank you. That's perfect. Uh, so 
Now we are at my favorite question. <laughs> Tell us your favorite story about treating a dancer. So I had this dancer in one of the shows I'm working on who ends up doing a lot of quick changes in the show. She ends up actually doing 17 quick changes. And she had a thumb injury that she ended up having to just grip things in a terrible way to make the clothes get on quickly. She didn't really think much of it because there were other things that were hurting her more. But one day when there wasn't something hurting her more, I ended up working on her thumb and I found that one of the bones was out of place and I put it back in and she cannot stop talking about how wonderful her hand feels. (laughs) (laughs) Miracle healer. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really glad her thumb is back in place. (laughs) We are too. Yes. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Julie. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us for another episode of Physiotherapy Performance Perspectives. Join us on the first Monday of every month for the next episode. To hear more of our episodes, click on the link in the description below to view our website. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash PT Performance Perspectives to stay informed. And finally, if you want to get in touch, email us at ptperformanceperspectives at gmail.com. 